Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In the previous lecture, we have seen in some detail aspects related to scalar quantization. In particular, we saw how you can quantize a uniform random variable, a Gaussian random variable and what the impact was on the mean squared error and how that connected to your choice of boundaries and quantization levels. In this lecture, we are going to implement these on GNU radio in a simulation. We are going to write a small python block that not only calculates the quantized values, but it also gives you the mean squared error if you specify the quantization levels. Let us go about this in the coming minutes. Before we evaluate our quantization performance on GNU radio, let us first see how we can implement quantization in a very simple way using python so that we can embed this into our python block on GNU radio. We will first import numpy by saying import numpy as in p and then we will perform the quantization in a very simple manner using Python's and NumPy's inbuilt uh, array features. First, let us set our quantization points, so quantization levels. So let's say Q levels is np.array. Let's say that our levels are minus 0 0.75, minus 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. Let us say that these are the levels. In fact, if you remember, this is these are the optim, optimal quantization levels for a uniform random variable between minus 1 and 1. For starters, let us generate 10 random values between minus 1 and 1, which are uniformly distributed. We will say x is equal to np.random.rand and we will say 10. As you can see, x, there are 10 random values between 0 and 1 but to make them be between 0 point minus 1 and 1 rather you should just say times 2 minus 1 and if you say x you get 10 random values between minus 1 and 1 that are uniformly distributed. Now our aim is to check each of these values and then quantize them to the closest quantization level. For example 0 0.35 you can see that it will be closest to 0 0.25. Similarly, minus 0 0.98 will obviously be closest to minus 0 0.75. Now, one obvious way is to perform a loop over every one of these values and then compare it with every one of these values and choose the minimum. But a better way is to use the array features of NumPy to do this in one shot. What we will do is we will essentially repeat this array x four times and then repeat this q levels ten times perform a subtraction and get the minimum for each row one shot. Let's see how this can be done. So if you look at this x, it is an array of shape 10. So now let us just repeat this four times as in four columns. So how do I do that? I can say x dot repeat 4. If I say x dot repeat 4, it repeats it in a linear fashion which is not what we want because it's like 0 0.35967, 0 0.35967 is repeated 10 times and so on. Okay, this is not what we want. Instead, we will use, we can actually do, you can actually reshape this, but instead what we will do is, we will use np.repeat, we'll say x and we will say 4. This yields the same result. But now we can then say axis equal to 1, axis is equal to 2, sorry, axis is equal to 0. So if you do this right, then you essentially get an array that has 4 rows and 10 columns and these 4 rows and 10 columns have the values that you want repeated I mean, you know, the same values are there, the 10 values are repeated for, you know, 10 times, 4 times rather. Now, if you just take the transpose, you will get this. So, you have the same 10 values in X repeated in columns, you know, multiple times. So, for example, if I just say X enter, 
you see this 0 0.359, 0 0.359, 0 0.344, 0 0.344. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the first column by minus point from, you know, I'm going to subtract minus 0.75 from the first column, minus 0.25 from the second column, plus 0.25 from the third column, plus 0.75 from the fourth column. Take the absolute value and take the minimum across all of these because that will give me the closest quantization point. Let us begin doing that. If you look at our Q levels, our Q levels are minus 0 0.75, minus 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. Let's do the same thing. NP dot repeat. We'll say Q and we'll say 10. We'll say axis is equal to 0. Q levels rather. So now we have these and we have these. So all I need to do is subtract and take the absolute value. Let's actually give these some names. So I'll call this QL reps. I'll call this X reps with repetitions. So now if I say NP dot absolute, QL reps minus X reps, I'll get an array of size 10 cross 4 and I just need to find out the index of the minimum value over here. I just need to find the index of the minimum value on each row. So to do that I can just say np.arg min and np.arg min you just have to specify the axis whether it is row or column. If you say 1, you get the exact thing that you need. You get the index of the minimum element per row. And if you now just say Q levels square bracket NP dot arc min, you get the quantized value. To confirm whether this is indeed correct, what we can do is we can just compare this with the original array. You can check that 0.35 is close to 0.25 that's correct 0.35 is close to 0.25 minus 0.8 is close to minus 0.75 0.44 is close to 0.25 closer than 0.75 of course minus 0.24 gets mapped to minus 0.25 minus 0.98 again gets close to minus 0.75 minus 0.75 is there 3525 so you can see that in just a one line of code you are able to perform the quantization very very effectively we will be implementing this idea when we when we view the quantization block on GNU Radio as well. Let us now move to GNU Radio to implement this code. Let's just revise the lines first. So we have our random variables, we have our Q levels, we have our X reps, we have our Q QL reps. And we have our quantization as this. So let us now implement this in GNU Radio. We will now begin our implementation of the quantization which we just discussed on GNU Radio. To review the quantization, we will be looking at both the quantized values as well as the errors. So let us first grab a noise source, control F for commander, we'll say noise source, and we will perform the quantization first with a uniform random variable. So let's just double click this noise source. We'll call it uniform and amplitude is one. We'll call it float and let's actually see the kinds of values this takes by adding a histogram. So I'll do control for command F. We'll say throttle first. We'll make this a float throttle. And then we'll say histogram, control F or command F. We'll grab a histogram. And executing this flow graph is going to give us values between minus 1 and 1 uniformly. If you want to make sure that it is indeed uniform, you can just take more points. You'll see that it's reasonably flat because roughly 100 out of the 1000 fall into each bin. So now, let us now go 
100 of you know 100 out of the 10000 rather okay let us now go about performing our quantization okay let's also add a time sync control f command f we'll say time sync the time sync also we will set it to float and we can just view the uniform values they may make some sense okay this is uniformly distributed if you just look at the amplitudes and we can now move ahead we will now build a quantizer which takes in one argument that has the quantization values so let's use a python block so control f or command f we'll say python we'll grab a python block we will say our example param will change to a list that contains the quantization values we'll say open in editor now we will perform our usual corrections by removing the comments we will call this our quantizer it takes float input and let's say it gives two float outputs one being the quantized value the other being the error we will also give out the error because we can histogram the error to see how it works and instead of example param we will call it q levels we will change it to q levels so now we are ready to implement our quantizer over here use the same approach as we did in the code we will first say q levels is equal to self dot q levels this is just for convenience so that i don't have to type self dot q levels each time we say ql rep is equal to ql reps is equal to np dot repeat q levels and we will repeat it as many times as there are inputs so we'll say len inputs input items 0 because that is the number of values that you have axis as we saw there is equal to is equal to 1 similarly we will say x reps is equal to np dot repeat input items 0 and we will repeat it based on q levels we will say len q levels axis is equal to this axis should be 0 apologies should be 0 and this should be 0 transpose our quantized values are just going to be set in this manner q levels and we will actually make sure q levels is a numpy array so that we don't have any issues with the indexing if it's a standard python list then there could be some issues okay we'll say np.argmin and this np.argmin needs axis to be equal to 1 because we are performing it row wise and we're going to take np.abs and this np.abs is going to be ql reps minus x reps and the error is going to be the second output so we'll say output items 1 colon is very simple it's going to be input items 0 minus or we can directly give it in this manner we can just say x reps minus ql reps sorry we can just say input items 0 minus output items 0 this is just going to be x minus x hat a couple of remaining changes to make the code work are first to rename this as self.q levels because in the work function we are actually accessing self.q levels and we don't need self.q levels underscore param we can remove this unnecessary comment and finally 
input items must be within a square bracket because we are replicating the array so we must specify input items itself as an array within square brackets with this we are ready if you say this is okay and our quantization levels are minus half and half if you execute this flow graph you will see that you will get this performance to check that this is correct let's go to the stem plot and let's stop this temporarily if you now zoom in you can clearly see that whenever the blue value is negative that is the value is between 0 and minus 1 the quantized value is minus half which is correct when of the blue value is positive that is between 0 and 1 you can see that the quantization value goes to plus 0.5 which make complete sense the error is between minus half and half because let us say that you are your random value is a number between 0 and 1 it's a positive value it gets quantized to 0.5 the number plus 1 when it gets quantized to 0.5 results in a quantization error of half the number close to 0 when it gets quantized to 0.5 results in a quantization error which is minus half or I think the reverse so 1 gets quantized to 0.5 error is half minus 0.5 gets sorry 0 0 gets quantized to 0.5 the error is minus half let us now see how this performance changes when you have more bits we can actually just take a copy of this quantizer say control C control V and let us connect the same input we'll connect we'll make another time sink we'll make this 3 we'll make another histogram input make this 2 now this quantizer we will make it go between minus 0 0.75 minus 0 0.25 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 which is the optimal 2 bit quantizer for the case where you have uniform random variable between minus 1 and 1 so we connect the original output to the time sink and this is the error and now if you execute the flow graph you will see that the error becomes narrower and the error is naturally be between minus you know minus 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 and if you zoom in onto the waveforms as well if I hide the red one you can see that the green is a more faithful reproduction of the original waveform and the error is definitely lower let's add one more bit over here let us now add one more bit so the levels are going to be it's very easy minus 7 upon 8 minus 7 upon 8 minus 5 upon 8 minus 3 upon 8 minus 1 upon 8 and I'm going to copy these and or rather let me just write it 1 upon 8 3 upon 8 5 upon 8 and 7 upon 8 and with this let us just inspect what we get as you can see now the error it becomes even more narrow because it is now between minus point it should be between you know minus 0.125 and 0.125 which it probably is you can verify by changing the number of bins and then if you look at the green one it is actually quite close to the blue one and if you want to plot the error also you can just subtract and plot it I am leaving that to you as an exercise let us also do one more thing let us actually just see how the error looks like for a Gaussian so for that I am going to add a parallel noise source and perform the same thing so let's actually just copy this control C control V and we're just going to change this to Gaussian we will then add the same equipment control C and control V is what we will do and now we can just connect the Gaussian source to these here however let us make the quantizer the optimal quantizer for a Gaussian from the lecture you may recall that the optimal value is root of 2 upon pi so we can try setting that value and seeing how the performance is so we choose minus 0 0.798 
and this is plus 0.798 because this value is close to root of 2 upon pi and we will leave the second one as is and see how the error looks. So now over here the time sink we will connect the original source and we are set. If you execute this flow graph, uh, let us actually add some labels. Okay, So we are going to say uniform and we will copy this, we will call this uniform. Here we will call it Gaussian, copy this and here also we were going to call it Gaussian. Now executing the flow graph, for Gaussian it seems to give this kind of uh, performance. Let's uh, see, the, for the Gaussian this is how it looks like and this is how the histogram looks like. Okay. Now one thing is interesting that it, it starts looking close to uniform. Um, the original error, however, let's see, the original error also starts to look flat. Okay, Let's actually just set this to, uh, let's say, 0 0.1 just for fun and see what happens. It's a poor quantizer, but we will see what the impact of this is. And you can see that, the uh, you can see here that the error is quite you know poor because you know the error is quite different because the quantized value is very far from the real value and the error over here the blue curve is definitely much much more fat and you can see, barely see but the amplitude is you know it's it's close to um, you know the uh, the error is actually close to really really high value over here but of course the uniform quantizer still seems to do well we can hide it and you can see that the error looks like this now, if you increase this value to let's say minus 1 and 1, let's say this is minus 1 to 1 and let's to take the optimal quantizer here which is the optimal 1 bit quantizer, let's say it is minus 0 0.79, 0 0.79 and we can compare these. Obviously the second quantizer should work better, let's see what happens. You can see that the second quantizer works better because its error footprint is much lower. It's actually incurring a much lower error than the first one. The first one has a higher error. Even if you look over here, you may sort of see that the green one and red one are very close, but the green one supposedly tracks the blue curve better because the amplitudes are not high very often while the red one assumes that the amplitudes are higher. To get an even better picture, if you say minus 2 and 2. This is going to be a very bad quantizer and the blue curve is going to be very wide. The blue histogram is very wide. As you can see there is a lot of error. Over here however, and you can clearly see that there is a lot of overshoot for the red while if you look at the green and the blue, the green and the blue are comparably much better. So in this manner you can verify the performance of the quantizers by writing a simple quantization code and by adding more and more bits you can improve the performance. If you want to just confirm even for a Gaussian, let's say that you add these bits over here for a Gaussian, you will see that the blue curve is now going to be very good. So if you use a uniform quantizer, even for a Gaussian, it's going to perform reasonably well although you may be wasting a little bit of bits because you are not taking into account the distribution. So in this manner you can easily verify the performance of various quantization algorithms. In this lecture, we saw how you can use GNU radio to good effect to perform quantization. We built a simple quantization block wherein you have to specify the quantization levels and in GNU radio you can then use this, this block to perform mapping to these levels in terms of a minimum distance mapping and also observe the error. We saw both for a uniform and Gaussian sources that if you deviate from the optimal quantization points, your error performance diminishes significantly. Therefore, choice of the correct error, uh, correct quantization levels definitely improves your quantization performance by minimizing the quantization error. Thank you.